Hi there. Welcome to the Health Analytic Insights Podcast. This podcast is all about creating a community of like-minded individuals who are passionate about the field of health informatics. I hope to share information and advice in topics such as health analytics, digital health, biomedical engineering, and data visualization in healthcare. And in exchange, I would love to hear from you, dear listener, about your experience and interest in this field. You can drop me a line at healthanalyticinsights at gmail.com. And this email, along with any references discussed during this podcast, will be listed in the show notes below. If this resonates with you, don't forget to follow and subscribe to this podcast, as I'll be releasing new episodes bi-weekly. There has been a growing trend on YouTube specifically over the years of people giving advice on how they would approach starting out in a field if they had hindsight. For example, you can find on YouTube people who work in the field of data analytics or data science, the knowledge they now have, filming videos titled, how would I learn data science if I had to start over? I've watched a few of these videos, especially from YouTube content creators such as Luke Barros and Alex the Analyst. And these are great channels, especially if you're interested in switching into the data analytics field. So I'll make sure to link to them in the show notes of the episode. I thought I would do my own spin on this trend for the field of health informatics on how I would learn health informatics if I had to start over now with the experience that I have in working in this field. So the first thing I would do if I had to start over and learn how to break into this field is I would go to the AHIMA, which stands for the American Health Information Management Association website, and they have a wonderful resource in the form of a career map, which has a list of job titles that exist in the health informatics field. I will also link the Digital Health Canada Career Matrix, which also has a list of job titles. What's great about this career matrix is it gives you a sense on career progression. So it gives you some job titles in the entry level category, in the mid level professional career category, and then in the senior level category. And it gives you a sense of how many years of experience it might take to progress into these different roles. So all of that will be linked in the show notes of the episode. And why I would do this is I have received a ton of comments from listeners of the podcast and of the YouTube channel expressing their dismay of not being able to understand what the job titles that exist in this field. I even received one email from a listener of the podcast who was really torn up about the fact that she had no idea what job titles even existed in the field. And she had gone through her degree program and she felt like she didn't even deserve the degree because she really was having a hard time understanding how she could actually get a job once she graduated. I really wanted to let her know that she's not alone in this feeling. For me also, I was really confused about what are the roles that I could actually apply for because this is a fairly new field. It's not as established as other fields such as business analyst or a project manager. And so it can be really confusing to even start your job search and you can really start to feel dejected. So I would go approach resources such as the AHIMA career map and also the digital health career matrix to even start to understand what are the job titles that are in the field and what are the job skills that are associated with these job titles. And there can be a potential disconnect between what is taught in school and academia versus what is actually applied to the working world. There can be a disconnect in even going to a career counselor who might not be familiar with the health informatics field. So really don't feel dejected if you are graduating from school and don't have a good understanding of what are the roles that you can apply for. The second thing I would do if I had to start over in the field of health informatics would be to dedicate a good amount of time researching tons of job postings within the job titles that I found in step one. So that would look like plugging in roles such as a clinical decision support analyst or a business intelligence analyst into Indeed or LinkedIn to gain an understanding of some of the technical and soft skills that might be required of these positions. And once you start to dedicate enough time, you'll start to see common patterns of tools and skills 
that you should be familiar with if you're looking to apply to these entry-level roles. Some of these common skills include strong communication skills, ability to work on an interdisciplinary team of clinicians and IT developers, data visualization skills, and a general understanding of clinical terminology. By understanding these general patterns of what are being requested of job postings, this can help you identify which areas you might be weak in. And it'll be great to kind of start this process while you're in school because it can help you to look for different resources that you can start while in school. So for example, improving your communication skills. You can join clubs such as Toastmasters or even within your own degree program, you might have clubs specifically associated with communication. So for example, if you're a grad student, you often have to do several presentations to your advisor or to other students as well, or if you work as a teaching assistant. So there's often resources in terms of improving your communication skills that you can acquire. When it comes to data visualization skills, you can start to look at free resources such as Power BI. They have a Microsoft Learn program where you can start to research modules. And again, if you're in a graduate program, oftentimes you might have free access or a student license to some of these tools. So something like LinkedIn Learning, you might have as part of your degree program as a graduate student that you can go and look at courses for free. So these are just some tips that I would do and really try and apply these tips as early as possible. And then another thing that I would do is start to work on a portfolio project. Once you take these courses, instead of just being a passive observer, you can really start to do some active learning by creating your own portfolio project. So taking the skills that you've learned from these courses and then applying that to a clinical problem such as patient readmission rates or patient satisfaction scores. And I have a whole series on the podcast talking all about common healthcare analytic metrics that you can go back and listen to to get a sense of some of the common healthcare analytic metrics that you might want to use and apply in your portfolio projects that you can work on. And so there's a lot of clinical data sets out there that you can use that are open source that you can use in your portfolio projects to just start to gain some technical skills in terms of learning how to clean data, learning how to deal with common data issues such as missing dates or names that have to be concatenated. These are all skills that you can really take a deep dive in and start to learn on your own. If you find that it's not your technical skills, but your clinical skills that might be weak, you might consider taking a few online courses or working as a research assistant in a hospital or healthcare organization to get an understanding of common clinical issues that might be affecting clinical staff. There's also often certain organizations that have patient advisory committees or public advisory committees where you can join just as a member of, a, of the public who's experiencing the healthcare system, where you can join and start to understand some of the common clinical challenges that might be in your local area. Also, you can join health informatic organizations as a volunteer. And so it's just about exposing yourself to certain clinical issues that you might not have if you're purely technical. And the final step I would take if I had to approach breaking into the field of health informatics with the knowledge I now have would be the importance of starting to build and continue to build your network. During my graduate degree, I, you know, I thought I understood the importance of networking, but I didn't realize how critical it was until I actually started to work in the field and become aware of the hidden job market. So many of the postings may not be publicly advertised and can really only be accessed by knowing the hiring manager. It can be very frustrating and unfair, frankly, but currently it's how the world works and it's really important to build your network. The really reality is that people like to hire people that they know and it can be a tough pill to swallow, especially when you're just first starting out and you might not have a wide network. And this can be especially true for first generation immigrants or people of color who might not have family members to rely on to provide them with those first time connections. But I think that there are ways that you can find ways to connect with people 
such as joining health informatic volunteer organizations, joining meetup groups that have a focus on healthcare and clinical issues. Although it can be a bit of a challenge, you know, to balance networking when it comes to, you know, having a full-time job, maybe going to graduate programs. But I would think that it's very important if you want to get a job in this field, really to rely on your network. And that can be done, you know, if you have an opportunity to have a co-op or an internship placement as part of your degree program, really building networks within that time, that short time period that you're working there, making sure that you're adding people on LinkedIn, connecting with them, getting to know them in a friendly and informal way as well too. So joining any after work activities or during work activities, maybe you have lunch and learns that you can join during your co-op placements or your internship placements, and really just trying to get to know the people within the organization is critical for getting your next job. And a funny story actually happened to me is I had someone reach out to me who follows my posts and listens to the podcast, and they asked me if I knew of any job roles. And at that time, I actually left my previous job role, and they were looking to hire someone, and I was able to refer them to this job posting And they actually got the job, so they're now working at my previous role. So you never know who you can meet, who you can reach out to. I definitely suggest reaching out to people on LinkedIn and just growing your network organically as best as you can. I think when people go into networking, they think that it's going to be a fast process, but it's definitely a slow burn, but it has very positive, long-lasting effects. So it's just something that you just do throughout your career, but definitely try to do it as early as possible. So these would be the three steps that I would take if I had to start in the health informatics field from scratch. And I hope these lessons are of value to you. Thanks for listening.